the title of a speech is STAR, an abbreviation which, which I think she will break down further in her speech. STAR, Christine, Christine, STAR. Take it away, Christine. Thank you so much. STAR, what comes to your mind when you hear of STAR? Is it the millions of stars in the sky? Or is it the star the shape? Or is it maybe, do you think weddings, flower girls and star girls? Or maybe the horoscope? Or maybe whatever you think about. So that's not we are going, what we are going to talk about today. Today we are going to talk about a model, a model by one Jonathan Chick, a psychologist. So let me take you to how it all started and how it is going right now. So in the beginning, people considered introversion as the polar opposite of extraversion, which is not the case. It is the case, but that was a vague idea of what it really is. And therefore, this Donathan Chick realized that the way he described introversion and the way his friends, his colleagues described introversion and the way other self-described introverts described it was not the same. And therefore, he went further and together with his colleagues, he interviewed around 500 adults aged 18 to 70 years. And the more he interviewed them, the, the less the one size fits all definition seemed. It was just not one definition. It was just not one way to do it. And therefore he came up with this model, the STAR model, S for, size, S for social, T for thinking, R for anxious, and R for restrained. Let's break this down. So the social introverts, this is considered the the typical definition of introversion, which is not really the case because there are four types of introversion. Those are the types of introversion, but you can refer to them as shades of introversion. So the social introverts are the people who prefer solitude rather than large, gathering, large gatherings. They prefer smaller groups of people rather than larger groups. These are the people you'll find sleeping in over the weekend instead of going out to party with the friends. These are the people who will accept an invitation gladly, knowing very well they will not attend the invited the, the, the social event. And the social introverts have a higher high preference to solitude. And therefore they prefer to stay alone, not because of shyness or anxiety, this time because of their preference. Then we move on to the, this brings us to the anxious, anxious introverts. These are the ones who prefer solitude, but this time, not like, unlike the social introverts, this time it's because of shyness. They are shy, they feel awkward in social places, they do not like going to public places, they, they feel self-conscious when in, pub, in social places, in social gatherings, and therefore they shy away. And their anxiety does not wear away when they, when they are alone, when they are in that room alone, they tend to think over and over, thinking about what could wrong, go wrong and what could have gone wrong in their day-to-day -day inter interaction. So they think a lot. And those are the anxious introverts. And then go to the thinking introverts. Our thinking introverts are the people who tend to think a lot. These are the intellectuals. They, they, they love books. They love research. They love, they love investigating. They, they can't do without anything that involves the mind. And those are the people who are capable of getting lost in their own fantasy world, thinking about stuff which are creative and imaginative. They are fun people to be around and they are very, very creative. They are the likes of the intellectuals that we have in the today's world. And that brings us to the final, to the final type of introversion, the final shade of introversion, that is the restrained type, the restrained type. You can also refer to them as the reserved type. These are the people who take time to get going. They, they are reserved in nature. They, they hold back from doing stuff. They do not just wake up from bed and get straight into action. They, they actually take time. They are lucky people. I tend to think that the person who said think twice before you think had met a restrained introvert because those people think twice before they, they speak. They think twice before they leave. And also, they, they, it's hard to get them to get to out, outgoing places. So generally, they are slow in nature, but that does not mean that there are any less of intellect. And therefore, those are the four shades of introversion. But 
why do you not call them types? Some people refer to them as types, but I prefer shades because introverts are not, you, most people do not do, demonstrate a high level of one and a low of another. They do not go to the extremes. It's usually a balance of them all, only that the definition cannot fit into one because there are different levels. They are different. The, the mixture is at different levels. And therefore, and therefore, the, there are not types of introversion, there are shades of introversion. So today, are you an introvert? And if yes, what kind of, what shade are you high on? And a fun fact before that, uh, have, who do you have that friend who never finishes their sentences? Or that friend who prefers to, to think critically before they give you answers? That friend who you ask questions and they tell you, I'll think about it. Well, that's probably an introvert. You should, well, inform her if you don't know. Thank you. Back to you, Mr. Dosmasters. <laughs>